In this video, we look at how to trace a breadth first and a depth first search algorithm and describe typical applications of both. We've already covered the various ways we can create or implement a graph. In addition, you need to be able to trace and write code that can traverse a graph, add an item and remove an item. And you can achieve this by using either an array and procedural programming or an object oriented approach. The exam board recommends you gain a general understanding of these methods backed up by a practical experience of implementing them, as opposed to trying to memorize any particular code pattern. We will start by looking at how to add an item to a graph. There is no single algorithm for adding an item to a graph because a graph can have any number of nodes connected to other nodes. As such, there is no predetermined set of algorithmic steps you can follow to add a new item. It all depends on the graph you're using and the item you want to add. Here's a graph representing links between nodes for a social networking site. Imagine a new connection is made from Craig's social page to show he becomes friends with Andy. What is important here is having an algorithm that can easily traverse the graph to find a specific node, in this case, Craig. Graph traversal algorithms are essential for this process, so we will cover those in more detail later. A binary tree is a special type of graph, so there is an algorithm for adding an item to a binary tree. We'll cover these later in our tree traversal algorithm videos. Next, let's take a look at how to remove an item from a graph. The situation we just mentioned about adding an item to a graph applies to deleting an item as well. Once again, we can't supply a single predetermined set of steps to delete a node. It all depends on both the graph and the situation. Instead, we need efficient algorithms that can easily traverse a graph in order to find a specific node. Again, a binary tree is a special type of graph, so there is an algorithm for deleting an item from a binary tree, and we'll look at that in later videos. So finally, let's look at how to traverse through a graph, outputting the contents as we go. There are two well-established approaches to traversing a graph, the breadth first search and the depth first search. A breadth first search is a node based method of finding the shortest path through a graph. It makes use of the queue data structure and the first in, first out method. With a breadth first search, one node at a time is selected, visited, and marked, and then adjacent nodes are visited and stored in a queue. We start by setting the root node or vertex as the current node and adding it to the list of visited nodes. Next, we visit every node connected to the current node. As long as the nodes we find are not already in the visited list, we enqueue them. So in this case, we'll visit B, C and D and enqueue each of them. At this point, B is at the front of the queue and D is at the back. We also add each linked node to the visited list. We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as our current node. So B becomes our current node. Note how the front of the queue is now pointing at C. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We add the current node to the list of visited nodes if it's not already in the list. B is already in the visited list, so we don't have to do anything at this point. Once again, we check every node connected to the current node. If a connected node is not in the visited list, we enqueue it. B is connected to A and E. But A is already in the visited list, so we only need to enqueue E. We also add this linked node E to the visited list. 
We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as the current node. So C becomes the current node. Note how the front of the queue is now pointing to D. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes if it's not already in the list. Once again, we find that C is already in the visited list, so we don't need to do anything. Again, we visit every node connected to the current node, if any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we enqueue them. C is connected to both A and D, and they're both already in the visited list, so we don't need to enqueue either. We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as the current node. So D becomes the current node. Note how the front of the queue is now pointing to E. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm once more from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes if it's not already in the list. Once again, we find that D is already in the visited list, so we don't need to do anything. Again, we visit every node connected to the current node, and if any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we enqueue them. D is connected to A, C and F. F is the only one not currently in the visited list, so we enqueue it and also add F to the visited list. We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as the current node. So E becomes the current node. Note how the front of the queue is now pointing at F. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm once more from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes if it's not already in the list. Once again, we find that E is already in the visited list, so we don't need to do anything. Again, we visit every node connected to the current node, and if any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we enqueue them. E is connected to both B and G. G is the only one not currently in the visited list, so we enqueue it, and we also add G to the visited list. We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as the current node. So F becomes the current node, and now we're pointing to G as the item at the front of the queue. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes if it's not already in the list. Once again, we find F is already in the visited list, so we don't need to do anything. Again, we visit every node connected to the current node, and if any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we enqueue them. Well, F is only connected to D, and D is already in the visited list, so we don't need to enqueue it. We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as the current node. So G is now the current node. Note now how the queue is empty. As the queue is now empty, we move on to step six. We have reached the end of the algorithm and can now output the list of visited nodes A, B, C, D, E, F and G. A depth first search uses an edge based technique. It makes use of the stack data structure and its last in first out method. There are two main stages to a depth first search. Visited nodes are pushed onto the stack. And when there are no nodes left to visit, the nodes are popped off the stack. We start by setting the root node as the current node. We then add this node to the list of visited nodes as it isn't already in the list. Next, we follow every edge connected to the current node. If any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. In this example, D, C and B will be pushed onto the stack. You might be wondering, how do you know to add the items to the stack in that order? There is more than one valid output from a depth first search. 
you'll typically see the leftmost path being traversed first in marked schemes and other sources. However, it would be perfectly valid to follow the rightmost path first, or indeed any random edge you like. The results will be different, but you'll still be performing a depth first search. It all comes down to how you choose to implement it when you code the search algorithm. We now pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node. So B is popped from the stack. Notice how the top of the stack is now pointing to C. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes. Next, we follow every edge connected to the current node. If any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. A and E are connected to the current node, but A is already in the visited list, so we only need to push E onto the stack. The top of the stack is now pointing to E. We now pop the stack to set the removed item as the current. So E is popped from the stack. Notice how the top of the stack is now pointing to C again. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes as it isn't already in the list. Next, we follow every edge connected to the current node. If any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. B and G are connected to the current node, but B is already in the visited list, so we only need to push G onto the stack. The top of the stack is now pointing to G. We now pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node, so G is popped from the stack. Notice how the top of the stack is now pointing to C again. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes as it isn't already in the list. Next, we follow every edge connected to the current node. If any of these nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. G is only connected to E, but E is already in the visited list, so we have nothing to add to the stack at this stage. We now pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node, so C is popped from the stack. The top of the stack is now pointing to D. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm once more from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes as it isn't already in the list. Next, we follow every edge connected to the current node. If any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. A and D are connected to the current node, but A is already in the visited list, so we only need to push D onto the stack. We now have D on the stack twice. Again, let's just trust in the algorithm and follow it through. We now pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node. So D is popped from the stack. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes as it isn't already in the list. Next, we follow every edge connected to the current node. If any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. A, C and F are connected to the current node, but A and C are already in the visited list so we only need to push F onto the stack. We pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node, so F is popped from the stack. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm once again from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes as it isn't already in the list. Next, we follow every edge connected to the current node, and if any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. F's only connected to D, but D's already in the visited list, so we have nothing to add to the stack. One last time, we pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node, so D is popped from the stack, and the stack is now finally empty. Here, we would normally go back to step two, 
But as all nodes have been visited, we can now move on to step six. We've reached the end of the algorithm and can now output the list of visited nodes. A, B, E, G, C, D, F. As we mentioned earlier, there are other implementations of a depth first search that are all valid. And we've listed some other valid outputs here. The approach we've shown you assumes a user-defined stack with an iterative approach. However, you can also implement the algorithm using recursion. Doing so actually simplifies the algorithm slightly as shown here. Once again, there isn't a right or wrong way to implement many of the algorithms you are learning. Find an approach that you understand and practice it. So let's have a quick overall comparison with a breadth first search, you use the Q data structure to find the shortest path to an unweighted graph. We reach a node with the minimum number of edges from the source. It's more suitable for searching nodes that are closer to the source node. And it considers all neighbors first, so it isn't suitable for decision-making trees used in games or puzzles. With a depth first search, we use the stack data structure. We may traverse through more edges to reach a destination node from a source. It's more suitable when the solution is further away from the source. And it's also more suitable for game or puzzle problems. We make a decision and then explore all paths through that decision. If the decision leads to a win, we stop. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How do graphs work? How do you create a graph? How do you add a data item to a graph? How do you remove a data item from a graph? And how do you traverse a graph?